You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. First in your 11 minutes of nonstop news, the end of an era nearly 1,200 days in the making. The COVID-19 public health emergency is expected to expire today. Jerry Carnes is here to explain how that impacts you, Jerry. Good morning. You might be one of the many people who got a free COVID test in the mail. They've been free since early last year. That is going away. At the end of this month, the government will stop mailing out free tests. Your insurance provider may, may continue to cover the cost of over-the-counter at-home test, but they are no longer required to do it. You'll still be able to get vaccines free of cost. Vaccine mandates, however, for federal workers are going away. Private companies are free to decide whether or not they want to issue their own mandates. Labs will no longer be required to report the results of COVID tests to the federal government. Hospitals will continue to report to the Department of Health and Human Services, but they'll do it weekly rather than daily. Cheryl. All right, Jerry, thank you. Sticking with your 11 minutes of nonstop news, Police are now investigating a deadly shooting in Norcross. The victim was found dead at a strip mall about 12 hours ago, and police officers tell us this all happened after some sort of altercation on Jimmy Carter Boulevard close to Buford Highway. We're told the suspect is in custody right now. We're working to learn more about who police arrested. This morning, two survivors of the Northside Medical Midtown shooting are out of the hospital, and we're learning more about the victims. Jasmine Daniel started a verified GoFundMe. It's at $15,000 right now. She says she was working the front desk when she was shot in the chest and abdomen. Elisa Hollinger's GoFund is at, GoFundMe rather, is up to $12,000. Her post says she was in the doctor's office just in the waiting room at Northside Medical when she was shot in the face. Out of the five victims, one was killed. Amy St. Pierre's celebration of life is tomorrow at 4 p.m. in the Cherry Logan Emerson Concert Hall of Emory University. A former Falcons player accused of firing shots in a crowded park is out of jail on a $1 million bond. A woman says Moore shot out her tire, saying that her niece hit his daughter while they were playing. However, Moore's attorney says the woman tried to slam into his vehicle and he feared for his children's safety. That was a look at your Thursday morning headlines. All right, Chesley, walking out the door. It's going to be kind of warm for us. Yeah, and a little bit cloudy starting off this morning. Take a look at our live uh, picture here. You can see how we have mostly cloudy skies on the outside. We are anticipating those clouds breaking down, though, as we head toward the afternoon. So we'll get a little bit of sunshine in, help to boost those temperatures up just a little bit. You can see it a little bit better here. We have mostly cloudy skies, maybe a sprinkle or two where we had some showers through the overnight. But they're all dissipating. We're going to repeat this process as we head further into the afternoon, watching storms back off to the west of us could hold together and make it into our westernmost counties. That's the day it's going to be. Now, not as much sunshine as we saw yesterday, thanks to the extra clouds that we'll have around the area. A mix of sunny clouds will be the call for today. Temperatures in the 60s just about everywhere you look. 66 down toward McDonough, Stockbridge at 67. 66 Chattahoochee Hills, 67 degrees up into Fayetteville. You're looking at 66 Powder Springs, Dallas in Paulding County. You're at 68. Ackworth at 66, 65 degrees in Tucker, 69 degrees at the Fulton County Airport, 68 downtown Atlanta at the current tower. You want to wear forecast calls for the short sleeves again today with 81 degrees approach uh, uh, for a high afternoon high temperature. Now keep in mind, we should be uh, around 80 uh, for an afternoon high, so a little bit closer. But uh, the reason why we'll be that way is because of the cloud cover. Now we see the clouds breaking down and the sunshine sticks around a little bit longer. I think you'll see those temperatures going up a little bit, so maybe well into the low 80s for some spots this afternoon. Notice the rain stays back off to the west of us. Stationary boundary now uh, just to our west, but we'll watch these thunderstorms that begin to erupt and watch them drift over toward the east, which could make it into our state. We do have a somewhat drier air over us right now, but the moisture is continuing to build in, and so that will be our trend for not only today, but for the next couple of days. Storm Prediction Center has placed a marginal risk or a level Level one threat for severe weather just to the south and west of us. It includes our southernmost counties. Troop Merriweather County is included in that. That's where we could see an isolated thunderstorm pack winds up to about 58 miles per hour or maybe even have a little bit of hail associated with it. That'll be further down to our south. General threat for thunderstorms over the Atlanta metro area and over there or toward the east and up to the north. We'll watch that as we head through the afternoon. I'm thinking after four or five o'clock is when we'll start to see some of these thunderstorms over here to the west begin to develop. They'll drift into our state. They'll dissipate before they make it to the metro area. I'm thinking clouds hang on for tonight into Friday morning. Now we'll see the chance for showers throughout the day on Friday. We'll give it a 30 to 40 percent chance near 80 for the high and then warming up as we head into Mother's Week, Mother's Day weekend, looking at near 90 on Mother's Day.
Father's Day with a 30% chance for afternoon scattered showers and thunderstorms. This morning we are going through the new $40 million lawsuit filed in the death of UGA football player Devin Willock. It reveals new details. Molly Oak is joining us live with the highlights. Good morning, Molly. Good morning, Cheryl. That 53-page lawsuit details the final seconds of both Willicks and LeCroy's lives. And it points to a couple of different parties calling them negligent. The first, UGA Athletics, saying that it, that, uh, it claims that UGA Athletics negligently hired, supervised, trained, and retained LeCroy despite knowing her poor driving habits, including prior notice for excessively speeding in vehicles. It says UGA Athletics assigned LeCroy a rental SUV to drive, recruits, their families, and coaches for the weekend. The lawsuit states Lee Croy and Jalen Carter raced to a Waffle House hitting speeds over 100 miles per hour before Lee Croy hit a curb and lost control. It claims LaCroix's passengers begged her to slow down seconds before the crash. The UJ Athletic Association says it believes evidence will prove the claims against it wrong and will fight them in court. Now, this lawsuit also calls a couple of different parties negligent as well. We have the full thing linked on our website and go into a lot more detail on 11alive.com. Guys. Molly, thank you. Former President Donald Trump in the hot seat during a town hall with undecided voters last night as he's gearing up for another presidential run, but still repeating claims about the 2020 election, even though they've been disproven in court. It was a rigged election, and it's a shame that we had to go through it. It's very bad for our country. During the CNN town hall, he also addressed several controversies, including the January 6th riots. When asked if he would pardon rioters, he said he's inclined to pardon many of them. Now, Trump still faces possible indictments here in Georgia for interfering with the 2020 election results. Fulton County DA Fani Willis says she will announce her decision in July. Affordable housing is a growing concern in Metro Atlanta and beyond. An initiative in College Park is hoping to help. Fulton County Commissioners have approved a million dollars for a tiny home pilot project. The micro homes could go up along Princeton Avenue in College Park. We're just programmed to think that we need big homes, but we actually don't, which clutters up and have more space for extra things and stuff like that. The pilot program would include between six to eight tiny houses. They're about 500 square feet apiece. They'll cost between 100 and $150,000. We're 119 days away from the kickoff of the 2023 NFL season. And tonight you're going to be able to see the official schedule for all teams, including the full Falcon schedule. We have already learned they're going to be in London to play the Jaguars in October. The Falcons Jaguars game will be on October 1st at Wembley Stadium. Chesley. All right, let's go. We should just make a trip over there, you know, and cover the Falcons and enjoy London. 75 degrees will be our temperature by noon. Winds out of the east at about 10 miles per hour or less today. Going to see a mix of sun and clouds through the day. There's about a 20% chance for an isolated shower or thunderstorm to pop up. 81 for the afternoon high. Going to drop back down to about 79 degrees by 6 o'clock as you're driving home. Again, scattered shower, uh, an isolated shower or thunderstorm is certainly possible, but uh, a little bit more likely once we get into the day tomorrow. We'll be looking at that for Friday. And then over the weekend, afternoon scattered thunderstorms are possible as the temperatures begin to rise. Today, a Lawrenceville man will prove it's never too late to pursue your dreams. This is 72 year old Sam Kaplan. In just a few hours, he'll graduate from Georgia Gwinnett College with a degree in cinema and media arts. He's a father of five, graduated high school in 1969, so he'll get his diploma today. His 99 year old mother will be in the audience. <laughs> wow, I wow. yeah. love that. That's hey, awesome. Sam, head to Tegna.com. We might have a few <laughs> openings. We'd love to have you. That would be Ooh, terrific, right? Good idea. Ooh. Have a great day, everybody. Today's show is coming up next. We'll see you back here on Friday morning.